Being an actress alongside Hollywood's leading men is much more of a complicated job than some might think, but Marina Hara, the Irish-born actress, managed to do this with ease. Maureen's early life. She was born on the 17th of August, 1920 in Ireland. Her original name was Maureen Fitzsimmons and was the second oldest of six children in her family. She had a good upbringing in a strict Irish Catholic family. Her mother was a stage actress as well as a singer, while her father was a small businessman. Maureen showed more interest in the profession that her mother had chosen, so at an early age, she started dancing and singing in her school theater as well as staged many presentations for her family. Seeing that she had such a passion for dramatics, her family decided to send her to Ireland's most prestigious theater school, where Maureen would study music and drama. She finally graduated in 1937 and was immediately offered a lead role with Abbey Players. However, she refused the offer and decided to try acting in films. This led her to move to London, where she auditioned for an English movie. Maureen won the audition, but unfortunately, the film never got produced. On the other hand, her great audition caught the attention of Charles Lawton, who is a producer and Oscar-winning actor. He convinced Maureen to change her last name to O'Hara since he thought it would help launch her career faster. He later recommended her to play in the 1939 film called Jamaica Inn, directed by the famous Alfred Hitchcock. In the film, she acted as the orphaned Mary Yelland. This film was disliked by the public, but Maureen was noticed for her good acting skills her journey to a successful acting career. Charles continued to help Maureen, and in 1939, she was able to sign a contract with RKO Studios. In the summer of that same year, she made her American film debut as the beautiful gypsy Esmeralda, which she played alongside Charles, who was acting as Quasimodo in the notorious film called The Hunchback of Notre Dame. In the early 40s, she performed in the drama How Green Was My Valley as the daughter of a mining family. This drama was a collaboration with a famous director called John Ford. Maureen's haunting performance was so good that the film won many Oscar nominations and five top honors, including Best Director and Best Picture category. Maureen signed a contract with 20th Century Fox. She was soon sent, alongside Hollywood's leading men, in a couple of hit classics. The most famous films she released during this period were The Black Swan, Sinbad the Sailor, and Baghdad. Maureen was also offered a role in the holiday classic released in 1947 called Miracle on 34th Street. Here, the actress played a single mother who was working hard to make ends meet for her children, when suddenly, her strong, rational beliefs are challenged by Santa. During the late 40s and early 50s, Maureen was offered many roles in Technicolor movies. This was all due to her strong character, which was complemented by her beautiful green eyes and red hair. These characteristics led her to earn the nickname Queen of Technicolor. The actress gave some amazing performances in films such as The Buffalo Bill, The Flame of Araby, and The Redhead from Wyoming. After 1952, she entered a new chapter in her career as an actress when she was cast alongside John Wayne in Ford's romantic hit film called Western Rio Grande. Wayne and O'Hara instantly shared great chemistry during filming. This led O'Hara to be Wayne's leading lady in several films they played together in the next couple of years. They released two more films together under Ford's direction, including the criticized film called The Wings of Eagles and a lyrical drama called The Quiet Man. Her singing and comedy roles shifted her career. In 1960, O'Hara decided to change her career path as an actress. She started showing her great singing abilities in many television series, recorded albums, as well as the 1960s Broadway musical Christine. Later that same year, she was offered to act alongside Alec Guinness in the film called Our Man in Havana. She even started to appear in some family comedies, including The Parrot Trap, Haley Mills, Mr. Hobbs Takes a Vacation, and How Do I Love Thee. Maureen later reunited with her longtime friend John Wayne in a 1963 comedy called McLennock, and in 1971, they acted alongside each other again in The Big Jake. 
this was one of her last movies before she announced her retirement. O'Hara later moved to the Virgin Islands along with her husband, who she married back in 1968. Unfortunately, her husband died just one decade after their marriage. After 20 years of silence in the film industry, O'Hara finally decided to return to acting in 1991. Her first role after such a long time was in a bittersweet comedy called Only the Lonely. For the rest of the 1990s, she appeared in a chain of television movies that were mostly Christmas-themed and comedy-themed. In 1995, she appeared in the movie called The Christmas Box, and two years later, she appeared in The Cab to Canada. Maureen's most recent appearance was in 2000, where she starred in a TV movie called The Last Dance. In the movie, she appeared as the retired high school teacher. In 2014, O'Hara won the Academy Award for being one of the longest on-screen actors. She had a surprisingly long career that lasted 70 years. The Academy Awards then honored her by saying that she was the actor that glowed with strength, passion, and warmth. Maureen's Personal Life the actor had an unsurprising love life. She was married three times, which is very usual for actors. Her first marriage only lasted two years, when she was briefly married to George Hanley Brown. That same year, she had a divorce and got married to director William Price. With her second husband, O'Hara had a daughter she named Brownwyn Price just before both of them divorced in 1953. Unfortunately, O'Hara's third marriage also didn't last long. This time, it was because her husband, named Charles Blair, tragically died when he was involved in a plane crash on September 2nd, 1978. Blair was also a very notable aviator. He was known for being the very first pilot to make a solo flight over the North Pole and the Arctic Ocean. After her third husband's death, O'Hara decided to never marry again. She died recently on the 24th of October in 2015. The cause of death was due to natural causes, and it was reported that she died in her sleep at the age of 95 in Idaho. Her loving family members said that she was always as fearless and feisty as she was in her movie roles. They also added that Maureen was so proud of the Irish heritage she held. She spent a lifetime talking about it and the wonderful culture she was raised in. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure to comment your thoughts down below and subscribe to see a magic trick appear on your YouTube feed. As always, thanks for watching.